I've got to say, one of the best things about working on a courier ship is the downtime. Sure, some deliveries need constant monitoring, and some days we all need to multitask on other money-making ventures to make ends meet, but other times we're doing fine money-wise, and there's a nice long span of time until we reach our destination. Today, I was spending that time reading in the crew lounge, lying sideways on the couch so I didn't fall through the tail gap, with Telly, the ship's cat, purring against me. Originally, she was the human's animal, restricted to my quarters, but that didn't last long. Her adorable nature and pest-catching abilities won over everybody, even those of the crew who had exoskeletons, but couldn't properly appreciate how soft her fur was. I was stroking that mismatched fur with one hand, and holding up my reading tablet with the other, when Murr walked quietly through. I say walk, though really there should be a different word entirely for movement that involves that many tentacles slapping against the floor. Anyways, I didn't really pay attention. I was busy reading, and the lounge was open to anyone. Apparently the rest of the crew had other things to do, which was really their loss. I didn't notice when he walked by the first time, but when he came back, he was moving weirdly slowly. I peered around the tablet. Is he trying to sneak up on somebody out in the hall? I wondered. He wasn't looking at me, and the expression on his blue-black squid face was one of frowning concentration. I didn't interrupt. He moved into the hall and did indeed have a conversation with someone there, but it was a hushed one that made me even more curious. I lowered the tablet as Moore came back in the company of paint. She also looked serious, a mottled orange lizardly person who was coloured like the painted sunset she was named for, and who was really quiet or still. She seemed to be looking for something. What's up? I whispered. Telly flicked an ear, but only settled in deeper, still purring in a way that said she wasn't going to give up her comfy spot any time soon. I kept stroking her while I set the tablet on the end table. There's a mystery sound, Paint whispered back. Murr said it sounded like an engine problem. We shouldn't be able to hear any engines in this room. At least not that loud, Murr said. Did somebody leave a bit of machinery under a table? He seemed honestly baffled, and I hid a smile as it dawned on me what they might be hearing. Which direction is it coming from? I asked. Is it over here? They did some careful listening and moved closer. Moore climbed up on a chair. Are you doing it? I shook my head, grinning and still petting the cat. No, but you're close. Paint moved in with her head turned sideways for listening. Ow! Oh, what? Moore demanded. I shifted position just enough to disturb Telly, who stopped purring and raised her head with a meow of objection. Paint laughed. It's the cat! Murr pressed tentacles against his own face. I can't believe I forgot they make engine noises. They do, I said, with immense satisfaction, petting Telly again. And I believe that serves you right for the tentacle pop noise I couldn't figure out a while ago. He sighed like a deflating balloon. Yeah, okay, that's fair. How does she do that? Paint asked joining me in running a hand across Telly's fur. Oh, she's so warm. Paint's people are called heat seekers for a reason. I told her, she might sit in your lap if you're still. Paint was, of course, delighted by this idea. Murr threw several tentacles in the air and declared he was off to do something productive with his time. Have fun, I said. We'll be here petting the engine noises. He grumbled as he left. Telly made more sleepy meows when she was moved from one spot to another, but with two pairs of hands giving her ear scritches and attention, she settled down again. Her purrs were loud, and Paint's grin was full of joy.